First airing on October 19th of 1987, the fourth episode of Star Trek The Next Generation is a bumpy ride of highs and lows. It's important due to it containing the unfortunate first depiction of the Ferengi, so it finds itself the subject of my latest episode of my retro reviews of Star Trek episodes. Here's Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1 Episode 4 Review, The Last Outpost. The episode begins with the Enterprise in pursuit of a Ferengi vessel which had stolen an energy converter from Gamma Tari 4. Although the Federation had known about the Ferengi before this event, this is officially the first contact between the two civilizations. The pursuit continues until the Ferengi are forced to drop out of warp because of engine trouble. The Ferengi fires some sort of energy weapon at the Enterprise. The energy weapon disables the Enterprise, which is unable to move, fight, or escape. Riker and Geordi, working in engineering, decide that the only way to overcome the counter-effects of the dampening field is to immediately jump to warp. We ship down, then kick hard into warp nine. Yeah, come back, fight, woo-wee! Can we do it, Geordi? Ask me after it's done, sir. This plan does not work. After failing to break free and realizing that they are at the mercy of the Ferengi vessel, Picard decides the only option is to surrender. After suffering a few more technical issues, Picard reissues his surrender and finally hears a response from the Ferengi. As it turns out, the Ferengi had in fact been caught in the same trap that had ensnared the Enterprise. Picard's vaguely worded capitulation had in fact been interpreted by the Ferengi as a call for a Ferengi surrender. Unconditional surrender, I warn you, is totally unacceptable. Picard asks for visual communications, and we are granted our first view of the Ferengi. After learning that the Ferengi don't know any more than they do, Picard cuts communications and retreats back to the observation deck in order to figure out what has been going on. Data determines that the weapon which had disabled both ships is a leftover of the Takan Empire, which had left an outpost on this planet. The Takan Empire had been destroyed several hundred thousand years earlier by a supernova. I've never heard the word Takan before. Understandable. It has been extinct for 600,000 of our... Communication with the Ferengi Daemon reveals that the Ferengi no longer believe that the Enterprise is responsible for their situation. Picard and the Ferengi Daemon decide to lead a joint expedition down to the planet. Unfortunately, there is a malfunction and the group ends up being dispersed over the area. Riker finds Data and Geordi, but they are immediately ambushed by the Ferengi away team. We see a short scene aboard the Enterprise of the crew attempting to cope with the fact that the ship has no power, then we're back down to the planet several hours later. The Ferengi loot the unconscious Starfleet officers when Riker awakes and there is a fight. The fight ends when Tasha arrives with a phaser. We head back up to the Enterprise where the situation is getting much worse. With power gone, the ship has lost all ability to provide oxygen and heat to the crew. Dr. Crusher mentions that she thought about giving Wesley a sedative, but Picard disagrees, saying that he has a right to face death awake. Is that a male perspective? Rubbish. Back on the planet, the Ferengi are being fidgety as hell. Tasha fires on them, but the energy from her phaser is redirected into some nearby crystals. The Ferengi discover that the crystals have the same effect on their weapons. Suddenly, a powerful being calling itself Portal 63 appears and asks them to petition themselves for entry into the Takan Empire. Despite being informed that his empire no longer exists, the Portal Guardian refuses to believe it. Realizing the Guardian's power, the Ferengi immediately become accusatory, blaming the Federation for a number of perceived crimes. And there is even more. We can prove that the humans are destroyers of legal commerce. The Guardian challenges Riker to a test which he immediately passes. Fear is the true enemy, the only enemy. The Guardian takes a liking to Riker and restores power to the Enterprise just in time to save everybody on board. The Guardian asks what should be done with the Ferengi, insisting that he could destroy them for their crimes. Riker decides that they should be allowed to live, saying if they were to die, 
they would not learn anything. The Guardian notes that eventually the Ferengi may discover more powerful technology and may eventually destroy the Federation. But Riker replies, saying that's an inherent risk with the way of life of the Federation. The Guardian disappears, Riker beams some finger traps over to the Ferengi ship, and the episode ends. I have to admit that I think this episode is actually pretty good, at least up until a certain point. You have the pursuit of the Ferengi ship, you have the mystery over what happened to the Enterprise, you actually have a fairly interesting confrontational conversation with the Ferengi over the view screen. All these things make for a good episode of Star Trek, but where did it go wrong? Well, it went wrong when we went down to the planet. Up until a certain point in this episode, you can be forgiven for thinking that the Ferengi were mysterious, hostile, interesting, or even dangerous. Then you get this. What of our vessel? The same answer. The truth is, I gave those words to this human. What of them? Once you see them in person doing their weird Three Stooges gimmick, I don't know how you take them seriously. During the first season, it seemed as though the Ferengi were being geared up to be the potential primary antagonist of the series, sort of like the way the Klingons were in the original series. Unfortunately, this first depiction just kind of poisoned the well, and I don't know how you take this ridiculous group of people and turn them into anything that seems legitimately threatening. Eventually, the Ferengi would find their proper place in the Star Trek mythos as being sort of comic relief. But at this point, they were trying to make them be taken seriously, and they failed miserably. Armin Shimmerman played as one of the Ferengi here. He would go on to play as Quark in Deep Space Nine. Even his portrayal as a Ferengi in this episode is just absolutely terrible. You do have to give them a little bit of slack for this, because it is the first season of The Next Generation, which is notoriously riddled with problems but it's also the first depiction of the Ferengi. You have to find some way of both introducing them, introducing their life, introducing their culture, and producing a number of characters which behave in a certain interesting and alien way. I just don't think they pulled it off. Data's description of them early in the episode as being a series of traitors is a rather accurate description of what they would eventually become as far as, say, Deep Space Nine would portray them as being. But, unfortunately, in this episode, it's a little bit of a bad description. They come across as being more like pirates than capitalists or mercantile traders. After a certain point, I believe it's intentional that the Ferengi acted as childlike as they did. After Portal goes and takes Riker's side in their debate, they have to come across as more primitive in some way. Unfortunately, the way Paramount chose to portray this was to have them flopping around like orangutans. Taking the good with the bad, I'd say it wasn't the best episode, it wasn't even a good episode, but it's far from the worst. We'll get to the worst. Two out of five.